responsibility and defend your prophet Abdullah all right hello salam wa alaykum as salam Abdullah uh, I saw one of your videos yesterday and uh, I had a question for you are you mr. Shamsi or are you a different person I'm not Shamsi <clears throat> all right go ahead my friend what do you want to say uh, you mentioned a hadith from I think Sunan Ibn Majah yeah uh, it was about uh, there's no one whom Allah will admit to paradise, but Allah who will marry him to 72 wives, two from Huris and 70 from his inheritance from the people of hell. Do you remember this one? Mm -hmm. So I I looked at that was really crazy to me. So I looked that up and but it doesn't have a, a Sahih uh, grade on it. Could you explain that? Mm. Uh, are you talking about the one his penis will will not, never go limp? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I heard that and I was like, I don't. Yeah, my friend, my friend, the Muslim they say that this is a daif hadith, right? Yeah. But yeah. as you know, you can go right now. I'm not going to play the video for you of Sheikh Hamza, because Muslim they might flag me for copyright. But you can do that right now as you speak for me with me. You can search yeah. for Sheikh Hamza, and yeah, search for daif hadith Sheikh Hamza. And see what yep. Sheikh Hamza he explained to you, and this is guy is a Muslim, he's very well known. Yep. How he explained to you that Daif is did not funk, it pass. I'm just quoting him exactly. He said there's an attack in Daif Hadith. Daif Hadith did not funk, it pass. So when when a Muslim he said to me Daif, it doesn't mean that it's bad. Daif is still accepted. This is why it's called Daif because it have a rank. Like you know, when you go to exam, you have a you, you know somebody have A, B, D, C, you know you're, you're right. Yeah. So the Daif hadith, it's have a grade. It's not it's not zero. It's not bad, but it's okay, not so is not consider is not consider is not consider equal to other. But they cannot deny it in the same time, which mean which mean they cannot okay. throw it in the garbage. Okay. All right. Okay. So so because it's in Sunan Ibn Majah, that's still in the six canon books, right? Well, uh, uh, this is one of the reasons. But by the way, the, the the Sahih book is not only six, but let us say the most agreed upon are six Sahih writer or author, you know? Uh, yes. So yes, Ibn Majah is one of the six. And, and here there's a question. Okay, why do you call them the six Hadith Sahih? And then yet they say to us, the Zadaif. Does it make sense? Why it's there anyway? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't and, uh, yeah, yeah, and and uh, you know, uh, Abdullah, you are a Muslim, right? Hello, hello, no, I don't know what happened. Maybe he decided to leave us now. That was fast. Who is next? Who is a Muslim? Have a question. <clears throat> Hello. And by the way, if you think about this hadith, this is very nice of the Prophet. You see, this is a Prophet. He cared very much for the penis of every one of us. I mean, you imagine you go to heaven and your penis is not working. That's very embarrassing. A lot of women are lined up and they have no panties and they're expecting a lot from you. And then like, what? What? Like, what? It's not working? Like, now? I mean, come on. So here you you see that the prophet of Allah is very caring. He want to be sure that every one of you his penis is functioning. It's like 100% ready. <clears throat> Hello? <laughs> Sorry, I thought someone was going to hear me. Go ahead. What do you want to say? Uh I was just on the phone with you a little bit ago. All right. You were talking about the hadith. Hmm. So, my friend, why why you are a Muslim now? Um, 
that's like what my whole family has done since the beginning okay so you are born from a muslim family I understand but but i'm asking you you as a man and you sound like a nice gentleman what is the reason for you to still to accept this i mean look at this do you think really this is from god i think that it's so hard to look at all these details there's like you see there's the quran and there's the hadith and in, in the quran it says that we have to look at the bible and that the torah but then we go into the masjid and it says the the imam says that the books are corrupted so i don't know what to believe you know what 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 book is corrupted i mean if islam if you ask any imam he says to you that islam is not based only in the quran correct don't they say that it's based on the sunnah and the quran what muhammad he said and what the quran okay so if they keep saying to us that the sunnah full of corruption so how we can we can have islam to be exist because you have now let us say let us say Islam base 70% uh, on the hadith 30% on the Quran okay 30% according to Muslims is authentic and even that there's a lot of doubt about it and we can prove it to be wrong but let us say now 30% of Islam is proven to be authentic but now we have a bigger problem we have 70% of it everyone give you his idea the second they don't like a story they say oh it's not authentic right cp cp what if what if i told you that they only say it's legitimate if it's backed by the quran if the hadith is backed by the quran then it's authentic no my friend that's not true because there's many many verses in the quran abrogated by the hadith which means it's a contradiction for the hadith could you give me an example well as an example the prayer the prayer is five times in the hadith is three times in the quran yes okay what about the muta the muta is in the quran but forbidden the muta is in the hadith which hadith is it the muta chap chapter 24 verse number four you know okay okay well uh, 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 you know when when you say to me that hadith is more powerful than the muta when when uh, from from the uh, uh, from uh, like from Quran then how we can say if there is a contradiction we will not take it you know, there's there's tons of hadith. You can search right now for abrogated verses by hadith. You can go right now after you finish with me. Search for abrogated verses by hadith, and you will see there's many. So hadith, according to Muslims, is more powerful than the Quran. So when yeah. when, when somebody okay. says to you, you know, uh, uh, like, uh, oh no, if 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 the hadith contradict uh, uh, the Quran, we we refuse it. That's that's false. That's false argument. You know yeah this is for chapter 24 where the matter is you will see it says that those who you you know enjoy them enjoy enjoy uh, you know sexually you have to pay them and we can go to the interpretation and we will see that this is about muta so muta is allowed in is in, in Quran muta is not allowed in the hadith what we will do now I don't know Every time I have a question, they say that I need to ask the sheikh. Well, the sheikh, you have no answer. What about you ask the sheikh who you, they ask you to ask him to call me so he's, let us see if he can answer anything? Yeah. What do you think? Uh, honestly, I, I might do that. They will never, they, he will never do it because that will be a career ending. Look like these weeks, these days, everybody is saying career ending. <laughs> yeah, I saw the I saw the video you made about the debate between Muhammad Hijab and uh, Doctor Wood. Mm. What do you think about the Hijab? He said that Allah he pray for, not pray to. <sighs> That's I saw he made a another video where he he was just trying to explain it. Um, but the the in that one, I don't remember what surah it was in, but he said that the the meaning was that it allows praying on someone but i was thinking that praying on someone is like the same thing as praying for someone so I'm yeah not... i made a video about that one too because here 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 he himself get busted more because uh, still is the same you see david Wood he did not say to him allah he pray worshiping muhammad david Wood he was saying to him allah he pray so how he pray so he confirmed that twice once in the debate and once in the video you saw so this guy he confirmed twice he tried to fix it he make it a blind that Allah he pray and now the question is okay you believe that Allah is God and you believe in Tawheed which mean you are claiming that Tawheed mean one God so Allah pray to who? 
Doesn't Tawheed mean something else though? Tawheed have nothing to do with the word oneness of God. Tawheed in Arabic is mean unification of things. You know, okay. even even the even the verse which Muslim they keep quoting for us saying Qul hu, hu Allah ahad. You see, uh, if you go to the verse, I don't know if you speak Arabic. Do you speak Arabic, my friend? Uh, I know I can read Arabic, but all I right. Uh, That's, so you are like from the maybe Middle Eastern. Uh, chapter one twelve, verse number two and one. Let us see. It says, the Muslim translate. Let us go to the Arabic first. Qul hu Allahu ahad. Ahad in Arabic mean one of, does not mean one. This is number one. A samad, samad is the collective or the collection, it, which means it's about many. You see, Muhammad, he stole this word from the, the Aramaic. The Aramaic, they have something that's called masmada or masmuda, which is, you, see, you know, when you are a kid, maybe I don't know if you, you used to have a one. But in the Middle East, when we are kids, we used to buy like a little uh, thing made from, uh, uh, you know, burned mud. I don't know what they call it. Where you can save your coin inside. There's a hole, hole in it. So you can insert the coins and the money. You know what I mean? So, yes. so like, uh, you cannot take the money unless you break it. And if you break it, that will be like, so it's to make you resist the decision to break it because it's expensive. And then now you have to save the money. The second the, the money go in, you cannot take it out unless you, you break the whole thing. So this is what a summit is. How Allah, how Allah is one. And then Allah is the collective of coins or the, or the warehouse, the warehouse of many, many what? Of him. He is a summit. He is himself. He is the summit. The Muslim they try to explain that every Muslim star uh, cleric he tried to give us a meaning of a summit because this is not an Arabic word. They have no idea what this word means. So everybody he tried to give you his meaning. A summit uh, they say Allah is not the one is empty from inside. Well, thank you very much. He's a concrete. What is that? What do you mean empty from inside? That's funny. A summit is the one who is dependent in himself. Where, where do you get this from? So. They try to to find out what Muhammad is saying, but this verse actually, Muhammad is trying to copy from the Jews. Oh Israel, your your God is one, but instead of you see, I had here is very close to the word ikhad, ikhad in Hebrew. Yeah, the ikhad means one, right? Yes, but 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 doesn't mean one as a number. It means one as a unity. This is why the Bible says that the man and the wife they get married and they became ikhad. You know what I mean? The man, yeah. the, the man and the husband, the, 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 uh, the wife, when they get married, they became a chad. Okay, we're well, not talking about God. We're talking about a man and a woman. How they became one. This is not about one as a person. This is about one as unity. You, you understand me, friend? Yes. So this is exactly the same word. Muhammad is taking it from the Old Testament. And now he is inserting what the, what the Aramaic, they say, they say, Allah Samad. And then look, he added more. To say that Allah never gave birth and never was born, but who 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 is the stupid in the world who believe that we Christian believe that God He gave gave birth? Okay, CP, I have a we question don't. for you. No, no, well, hold on. Do the Christian be honest with me, uh, uh, Abdullah? Do the Christian believe that God He gave birth to Jesus? No. I don't think so. No. So why why the Quran is saying that? Doesn't it say that uh, you see here we, they, they translate it as he begotten not nor he begotten in Arabic it says clearly more that he never gave birth, never he was born. All right, but no Christian believe that God gave birth to Jesus, and nobody believed that God was born, which means the father was born, because we are talking about he never gave birth, gave birth, and never was born. So God, the one who never gave birth. Is supposedly the father, and the father never been born, but the Christian don't believe in that anyway. And then he mm. copied from the Old Testament, saying, "And there is none like into him." So all of this is a collective verses from the Jews. From the you know, uh, he is putting things together, and they, they don't make sense. Brother, I have a question for <clears> you. <throat> sure. How did he do this if he was an illiterate man? He did what? How did he take all these? You, you're saying that he put all these things together. How did he put these things together if he's illiterate? First of all, there is nowhere in the Quran, this is a fiction of Muslims, it says that the, he was illiterate. 
If you go in the hadith, you will find the following. And as long as you can read Arabic, that will make it easier for me. Okay. Do you see my screen, my friend? Yes. All right. Ibn Abbas said, when Allah Apostle was in the in his deathbed, so Muhammad now is dying. Okay. And there, there were some men in the house, obviously Muslim men. He said, come, come near. I will write for you something after which you will not go astray. Okay. And then uh, 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 some of them, i.e. the companions, specifically Omar actually, he said, Allah Apostle is seriously ill. In fact, doesn't say that, by the way. It says he is, he is going crazy. You know, don't listen to him. When somebody, you know, when a man, he's, he's in the, bed, uh, the, the the deathbed, and he say that, and you say, uh, mm -hmm. ignore him, he is seriously ill, which means what? Which means he lost his mind, right? And, yes. And, uh, and he said to them, and you have the Holy Quran. Allah book is sufficient for us. So the, the uh, Umar he's saying to Muhammad, "Are you stupid or what? We have the Quran, is enough for us. Why you want to write a book for us?" So here they start, they start uh, 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 fighting, and look what it says here. Some of them they said, "Give him writing material, so he might he he may write for you something." Do you see it? Yes. If Muhammad do not know how to write, they will not give him some material to write. They will say, "What was uh, Prophet? What do you want to say? We are going to write it for you, right?" How did he? Do, where did that story come from then? Well, this is Sahih Bukhari. This is Sahih Bukhari, and this is Sahih Hadith. Could you give me the number for this? Sure. Hadith? No problem. I will show you the reference on the screen so everybody will see it with you. Sure. Here we go. This is Sahih al Bukhari, hadith number 4432, book number 64. Uh, though, oh, by the way, all those numbers, not necessarily they are accurate. This is depend in the when they translate. But anyway, this is how it is here. All right. Okay. Is it showing on the screen for you? Yes. All right. So. Muhammad, first of all, he know how to write, how to read. But my friend, sadly, your people are ignorant. I'm not insulting, but I will prove it. You see, if you go in the Quran, you will see the Quran saying it clearly. Who is the one illiterate? The Muslim, why they say Muhammad is illiterate? Because the Quran say he's illiterate. But the Quran never say that illiterate mean do not know how to write, how to read. Have nothing to do. This is a religious book. This is a religious book. It's not about who can write, how can read. It's about who knows the word of God and who do not. So those who knows the word of God, they are called people of the book. Chapter 2, verse number 78. Read with me carefully, my friend. And by the way, Shamsi, if you are watching, call me Abdul, okay? Don't make an excuse. Just text me in the, in the, in, in the Skype, and immediately I will take you. I will apologize from the, from the person who is speaking to me, and I will take you immediately. Customers come first. Shamsi is my customer. Read with me. Uh, <clears throat> and there is uh, among them illiterate who know not the book. Do you see it? Yes. Okay. So what, who is the illiterate in Islam? Is it about writing and reading? Or it's about not knowing the book? It's about not knowing the book. So why the Muslim, they, they, they don't see it? You know why they are blind? Just they are copy paste. Nobody, nobody want to think for a second. Where you get this from? And not only that. You go in the Quran, you will find that the Quran always repeating the same idea. And not only that, the Quran says that the Christians are the people of the book, and al ummiyin Read with me carefully, chapter three, verse number twenty. <clears throat> And if they argue with thee, O Muhammad, I have surrendered my purpose to Allah. And so have those who follow me. And say unto those who have received the scriptures and those who have read not. Do you see it? Yes. The read not here is the same word, which is ummiyin, which means illiterate. 
this is a translation saying read not which mean they are uh, you know but this is not about they cannot read but those about who don't have a scripture do you see what it says here the Quran mm -hmm. div the, the Quran divide people to two kind of people people who have book they are called people of the book and people who they have no book they are called illiterate okay so Muhammad he do not know how to read this is a, this is a this is not a true story secondly Muhammad he knew how to read or he don't know how to read the Quran is full of stupid things with my respect to you I'm not trying to insult you do you really as an example did, did you hear about scientific miracle in the Quran yes okay can you give me one um <clears throat> the one about fingerprints and uh hmm. being able to identify with fingerprints do you, know, do you know what I'm talking about absolutely you are talking to Christian Prince my friend how do you know all this I don't know. Allah, he made me know. <laughs> All right. This is the verse the Muslim they use in about the fingerprint. It's chapter 75, verse number four. If you read with me, you will see how the fabricated... Actually, you know what? Let me search for first for the miracle first on the internet so we can read it together and we love together, me and you. All right? Let me find the fingerprint... Quran. All right. <clears throat> Just to show you how they deceive when they speak about those things. It's not true. It's false. The Quran is saying something totally different. And the Muslims, they come with something totally different. This is the Muslim website. And this is the miracle you just mentioned to me, or what is called miracle. Let us read together. <clears throat> uh, we all have fingerprint. However, they are unique. Even identical twins have different fingerprints. However, no one know this 14 year, 1400 years ago. But this was mentioned in the Quran that in the resurrection day, Allah will recreate human with all details even their fingertips today we know that those contain fingerprints uh, which are unique in each individual okay let us read together yes indeed we are able to resurrect his fingerprint <laughs> of fingertips uh, you know my friend do you see anywhere they are speaking about fingerprint his fingertips is the same as fingerprint. No. Okay. What the verse here is saying that you see when a human being body is is dead, uh, his thing his his hand bones they are so small, right? They are the smallest. Like they are they go like um, they scattered because they are the smallest, right? So what the Quran is saying that we are going to make this, even this, even the bones. Which is, which is one of the smallest bones in the human being or for the human being we are going to put them together and you know we can go right now and see the interpretation and you will see the interpretation it says exactly what I say it have nothing to do with fingerprint what fingerprint it's a fabrication have nothing to do with the truth and they lie about it if I go right now in front of you chapter 75 verse number 4 and I go to the interpretation 75 for Quran X and we go here uh, <clears throat> Ibn Kathir all right where is the site 75 for I will make create by yourself and you see how they lie anything anyone uh, my advice to you uh, Abdullah anyone says anything to you don't take what he say blindly just check it out you know you are a smart man and you know you know better all right look what it says read carefully with me this is the chapter yes we are able to put together in perfect order the tips of his finger do you see it yes meaning does mankind think we will not gather his bones surely 
this is talking about the bones not about the the the, the skin this is talking about putting the bones together so how they come to the conclusion that this is the quran speaking about fingertips uh, fingerprint i don't know it's a fiction they're just trying to fool you and fool many you know millions of people who let us create a miracle muhammad he have zero miracles so we will create fabricate what, what it's called miracle every single claim in the quran about miracle is a hocus hey guys uh, admin please take it easy in giving time out for the if a muslim texting even if he is as long as he is not using bad words as long as he is not cursing don't block him please let the muslims text please admins let the muslims text we don't have we don't do what the muslims do put yourself in their shoes their god is being exposed their prophet became a became a joke what do you want him to say? You want him to be happy? Give him time. Let him talk. Let him express his anger. It's okay. It's more healthy. All right? Don't do what the Muslims do. Let them post. Only if he use a bad language, then give him time out. He might explode. Come on. And maybe he is wearing a suicide belt now. Feel free, Muslims. Attack me. Call me names. No problem. Abdullah, are you with me? Yes. So what else, Abdullah, is still making you a Muslim? Don't you have a doubt now about... Ask yourself, if the Muslims are decent people, and obviously you are, I'm not going to say you are one of them, because I can tell that you have decency in your heart. But why those who they are fabricating this miracle? Obviously, this is a fabrication, correct? Do you agree with me? Yes. Okay. Why somebody, he believe in God, and yet he is religious yet he fabricate what it's called miracles what is the reason you think i was told that the book is not a book of miracles but a book of signs and maybe if things weren't if things aren't scientific now that at some point in the future they might be okay can can god make mistakes no okay have you ever heard of a woman she have a breast testicles have a what testicles breast testicles i've never heard of that well the quran says that muslim women look like he's talking about muslim women because as i know i never i never heard i, I went to school like i have a i finished elementary school and as i remember they never taught us that women have a breast testicle if you go in the quran in chapter 86 verse number seven you will see the following والسماء والطارق وما أدراك ما الطارق النجم الثاقب الثاقب إن كل نفس لما عليها حافظ اتصرا فلينظر الإنسان مما خلق let man see what he is created okay and then he continues saying how the man is created he is created from water gushing forth so it's what it's a water gushing forth gushing from where meaning the sexual fluid that it comes out breast forth from the man and the women all right now where this water is coming from read with me carefully uh, my friend proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs meaning the backbone or the ribs uh, uh, the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women <laughs> do you see it <laughs> yes so what kind of god he teach us that women they have a gushing fluid coming from between their ribs coming all the way to to their vagina i don't know well this is why i'm not married my friend abdullah i'm afraid i'm afraid to get married and then i go to the bedroom and my wife she take off her clothes and instead of finding that she have a breast i find excuse my language she have balls there in her breast her area i mean all my life i thought those are breasts and this is really scary so this is God this is God you tell me how Muhammad he was able to write this this is a proof that Muhammad is really a, a funny man he's a crazy man what what kind of a prophet he said that but obviously don't the sheikhs know this verse they have the entire my friend memory. who's there Abdullah have you ever been in the Middle East Yes, I've been to visit. Okay, before. who dare to say? Who dare to say a negative word against the Quran? Who dare? Nobody. 
They will kill you in a but second. But you're saying they know. But you're saying they know. They know. Absolutely, they know. It's, here we go. It's written by them. Who is the one who wrote this explanation for us? Isn't it a sheikh himself? <laughs> right? It's, this is a big sheikh. You know? So they knew for sure. But who there? They but knew. What about, sheikhs, what about sheikhs in America? My friend, it's still they don't dare. The Muslim they fear is live the Muslim they fear Islam they fear you know because but, but you're saying but you're saying they know my friend do you know the guy who came with the miracle number 19 no search his name they killed him in Arizona you said miracle number 19 yes he is the one who created the lie of miracle number 19 they killed him in his in his house in Arizona so no uh Rashad Khalifa Rashad Khalifa thank you very much uh what the hell yeah so you know there, there is there is muslim get killed just for defending islam this guy he was defending islam and they killed him <laughs> he was trying to prove islam to be from god and they killed him you see he, did, he was not insulting the prophet he was not attacking islam he was not doing anything wrong to islam he is trying to prove that the quran is a miracle they killed him for that I thought that it says that he was killed because he said he was a messenger. No, no, my friend. He, he, all what he said that you know he is you know obviously the the way he was able to discover it he was inspired to do it, and the reason they killed him because he had to take verses out of the Quran to make the number nineteen work. So he said there's verses in the Quran. Obviously, they are not from the Quran, and the proof. The number 19 calculation according to him will not work unless we take them off that's why they killed him uh, do we have shamsi home is shamsi arrived guys is 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 mr shamsi here if shamsi is here we are waiting for you shamsi don't stay and don't stay in the shams for long, long. shams in arabic mean uh, sun i'm afraid that shamsi is waiting for us shamsi are you there my friend please if you are there just just give us a uh, Give us a sign. Wave your hat. What a what what a man! Look, we are waiting for Shamsi. Abdullah, why why you think Muslims don't dare to debate me? What's wrong? Look, am I honest? Be honest with me. Am I nice to you or not? You're nice to me, but <laughs> I don't I don't know. Um, so why they don't uh, call me? Why they they why they they debate me be, uh, behind the you know the the. The curtain of the Kaaba. What they make videos? See, the Christian prince is lying to you, but nobody dare to come and debate me. But why don't you go to the to speakers' corner or somewhere where they go? I don't to... go. I don't go anywhere. Everybody knows I do my work in the internet. Why I want to go anywhere? I'm sitting behind my computer, drinking my tea and my coffee, and doing the the best I have right now. My friend, my friend, I have right now. I have right now six hundred thirty-six people listening to me. Can I do that in the speaker corner? No. The, no. the ones who's around me 10 people 15 people and everybody's shouting i don't like that i don't even need to take a, a car or a bus or to go anywhere i'm sitting in my home and everybody is comfortable and we are doing great so what this speaker corner this is the biggest corner you can imagine after we finish now there's tons of thousands they are going to watch the same video and here we can show the reference right anything i say to you i can show you the reference in a second in the speaker corner what i will show you nothing Oh. It's just people shouting. The prophet said, I said, he said. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so what is making you stay as a Muslim, Abdullah? What do you think about denouncing Islam? But like, don't you think Islam is really funny and cannot be from God? Do you think this is God is talking that woman she have balls in her ribs? I don't think so, but that's yeah? so, everything. Come that's on, everything. be honest. You should deny you should deny this cult. If I am you. I, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're, you're, you're not, you're, you know, you're a smart man. Why, why a man like you would accept such a thing like this? This is an insult to you. Because, my friend, when you follow someone and worship someone, and this someone he do not know, a very simple thing about a human being. If Allah is the one who created us, do not he know how we pre produce babies? Do not he knew? Right, he should know. Right, he is the one who make us supposedly. So obviously, the one who made the Quran is a fabricator. He cannot be God. There is no way God will say that. Yeah. So if I am you, my friend, 
I will denounce Islam and I will I will say Muhammad is a false prophet and this will be the first step for you to be free from illusion this is illusion this is madness you are just creating yourself an illusion saying okay there's a God his name is Allah and he's perfect and then when we go and read what he's saying we will find how funny how silly what he is saying so if I am you I will say Muhammad is a false prophet right now as we speak what do you think the the thing about the backbone and the semen that is not from God absolutely right and not what about what about the backbone <laughs> since when the sperm of the man is coming from the backbone <laughs> Abdullah my friend be careful don't ever fail down in your backbone you see this is why I have insurance over my backbone I am still single and when I go in the street you know like I put some things around my waist because I don't want my backbone to be you know broke what if something happened to the backbone this is why when I sit in the chair I said carefully imagine you sit like you know and you break it I mean that's it you you will never have kids no more backbone backbone the sperm of the man is coming from the backbone that is science so what the balls for that's stupid that's stupid thank you very much so you just left Islam my friend welcome <laughs> Guys, did you hear Mr. Uh, 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 Mr. Abdullah? He just said this is stupid. He just left Islam. So what is what is what is what, what are you waiting for, Abdullah? Just say Muhammad is a is a false prophet. He just said that. You just said it already. Just say. I need, it. To, I need to ask. I need to ask someone about this verse. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. I, I know, but I, I wish, uh, what, what what do you want to ask? Who who is better than Ibn Kathir now to ask the Sheikh who is the most there? This is Ibn Kathir. Your Sheikh will learn from Ibn Kathir. Yeah. So, denounce Muhammad, my friend. Denounce the devil. Say, I don't believe in you, Muhammad. Obviously, you're a false man. Uh, okay, okay. There's one thing that I'm struggling with right now. There was, right. I saw I saw a debate between Shabir Ali and David Wood, and they were saying that there was that Muhammad gave verses about praying to three goddesses. Can you explain that? Praying to three goddesses. Ah, oh. Allah to Allah. He said. He said it was a. Uh, David Wood said it was a satanic verse. Yeah, you see, in وما أرسلنا من قبلك من رسول ولا نبي إلا إذا تمنى ألقى الشيطان في أمنيته فينسخ الله ما يلقي الشيطان etc. Chapter twenty two verse number fifty two. Read with me. Never did we send a messenger or a prophet before thee, but when he Framed a desire, uh, Satan throws some vanity into his desire, but Allah will cancel anything which is Shaitan he throw in. That's what they are talking about. In this story here, Muhammad he was alone with a bunch of uh, uh, pagan Arab, and because he's a hypocrite man, he starts saying, "The three daughters of Allah, they are their their intercession is a must," and he bowed down to them, and the Arab they bow down with him. But there was people there, you know, and they start spreading the, the, the story that Muhammad, he did that. And the story arrived to the Muslims. And the Muslims, they were wondering how this guy, he says to us something in the morning and he do something afternoon. Totally the opposite. How he said to us, we should not pray to the Allah Al-Uzza. But when he was alone with the pagan, he prayed to Allah Al-Uzza and he say their religion and their, and their intercession is a must. Muhammad, in order to cover his ass, he said, oh, well, yes, I did that. I cannot deny it. But it was Shaitan who threw that in my tongue. And Allah sent me Jibreel to tell me this is, was not from me, it was from Shaitan. What do you think about this story? I don't know. Well, you see, the Muslim they say, well, Shaitan, uh, he tried, you know, he did not try, he was successful. And the point, Allah will cancel it. He would delete it right if it's not there if it's not there then why should why Allah need to cancel it you cannot you do not need to cancel something is not there correct yeah yeah so shaitan was successful and the Quran confirmed that shaitan he threw into into Muhammad desire and here there's other question the Muslim they say to you nobody can make Quran but Allah right 
Yeah. Okay. How Muhammad he took Quran from the Shaitan, but he did not notice that this is Quran from Shaitan. If nobody can make Quran but Allah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Why? Why Muhammad did not notice right away? This is cannot be from Allah because you know, supposedly nobody can make Quran like Allah. So now, you know, if we if we have that is saying we are going to make a competition who can make Quran, we bring the Quran of Allah, and genie and shaitan and a human being they want to make Quran and we make Muhammad the judge who can be judged better than Muhammad for this issue nobody right here we go Muhammad himself he took the Quran of the shaitan and he did not notice this is from the shaitan who how he can be a prophet how he can be how he can this is a contradiction for the Quran how the Quran says nobody can make Quran Right, this is so stupid. This is so stupid. Thank you very much. This is the second time you say stupid, the third time you are out of Islam totally. <laughs> what else, my friend Abdullah? I'm here to help you. Give me another thing you think uh, to clear confusion for you. Honestly, I have a lot of questions, but. Right now, I have to go to work. But where, where I, do you want to go, Abdullah? Come on, just read before know, you go. Before I, you go, denounce Muhammad. Say he's a false prophet. Come on, be honest. Say it. Be a man. You just said it twice. It's stupid. You said the, you said that Allah is a stupid. You said the Quran is a stupid. You said Muhammad is a stupid. And now you don't want to say I am out of Islam. I'm out of Islam. You are out of Islam, right? Yes. Thank you very much. Glory to the Lord. I mean to that I'm so happy for you Abdullah now Abdullah you told me you are going to go to work but I will before you go to work I have an invitation for you you know my name is a Christian Prince right yes and I am a fisherman I fish for good men the Lord my Lord the Messiah he told me to bring you to him and right now in front of more than 700 people I'm asking you to accept the invitation for the Lord of the Lord for the king of the king for the good name who speak no bad no sin to accept him i invite you to accept the messiah and for sure this is your decision i cannot force you to accept i cannot make you accept it's you who believe or not there's no name better than his name there's no teaching better than his teaching there's no one says love your enemy but him he speak wisdom he is the god of wisdom i invite you to accept the christ as a savior what do you say my but, what do, but what do i do then sorry again but what do i do then after i do that well what you do after that you know we learn we learn about the messiah feel free to ask me questions i will be happy to help you we can send you to some christian brothers who they can help you and guide you and you can read the bible and you can enjoy it and then you will you will see that your life will change you will have a journey amazing journey with the messiah don't worry about what will happen next because the messiah he will be with you Don't hesitate. Don't let the devil stop you, my friend. Okay. My friend. Sometimes we don't yes. we don't know if we will live for the tomorrow, right? Yeah. So, don't don't put down the invitation. He's watching. He's listening. Except, I mean to that. Hallelujah. I'm so happy for you, uh, Abdullah. And uh, 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 the Bible says that the happiness in the kingdom of God will be just for one person is saved. So let me call you brother Abdullah from now on. Brother Abdullah, I want you to say that I accept the Messiah as my personal savior and by him and by his name and by him only I will be saved. Say that my friend. I accept him and his name and accept him as my personal Lord and Savior. I mean to that. Hallelujah. Happy for you, my friend. 
trust me each time I hear one of, of our brothers accepting the Messiah I feel like my my body as if I am truly shaking as if I'm really like there is there is something happening this is amazing this is so beautiful and I am sure that you inside you you will have you will have the same feeling my friend Abdullah I advise you to download the, the, the Bible from the internet if you don't have it and start reading the gospel we have four gospels four witnesses all of them to speak the same thing but they report stories about Jesus what he said what he did you can start from the book of John or you can start from the book of Mark or from it doesn't matter four witnesses they witness for the Lord books of wisdom books of love books of journey personal journey this is why I said to you accept the Messiah as your personal Savior this is not about worshiping a God who want us to be his slaves this is about worshiping God who consider us ours as our his children this is why when we pray as a Christians Jesus said to the to his disciple when they asked him how we pray he said to them pray like this our father our father and this is the huge difference between Islam and Christianity if you ask a Muslim and you can search right now in the internet why Allah created a human being they will say Allah created a human being and jinn to worship him this is not our God our God he created us to be his children because he loved us so the idea of a creation is a huge between us and, and Islam and Islam is about a God who worship himself actually and he have a self-esteem issue in Christianity God he created us to be his children and his children here does not mean that he you know some Muslim they will say oh Christian believe that uh, God is their father he must be sleeping with their mother our father here is a very loving description for the one who provides us everything and the one who love us you see when 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 there is a a family you will see that the father he do everything and the mother they do everything in their hand to feed to take care of their family and their children our father is the best and the only provider and this is why we are his children and he love us he did not create us to go to hell he did not create us to be humiliated he created us to be his children all what we need to do is to accept his invitation and you just did so i'm happy for you abdullah and feel free anytime to call me if you wish thank you so much thank you my friend and feel free to let your family call me too maybe you can bring them to talk you know to call me and ask me questions I will be happy to talk to any of your family you know anyone anyone would like to call I will be happy to uh, to talk to him all right my friend okay any other question my friend I think that's all I have right now but I will definitely call back soon all right take care my friend and may the Lord bless you and don't forget, Bye. don't forget to start reading the Bible right away as soon as okay. you can. Thank you. God bless. Take care.